Christy Hagen with Superscum.com. I'm here at the Rockstar Energy Drink Mayhem um, Festival, and I'm here with Zach from Whitechapel. How's it going, Zach? Great. Never uh, lovely, as always. All right, the tour's been going on for about a week now. Um, how's it been going so far? I mean, every it's Mayhem. It's the best metal tour ever, so I mean, every show's awesome, so it's it's been going great. And you guys um, were on Rockstar Mayhem in 2009. How does this compare to last time? Honestly, it's you know it's still it's still the same. I mean, but it's just different. You know, we played with Slayer last time, which is awesome. It's awesome to be sharing a festival with them again, and you know we all look up to Slipknot too. So I mean, it's really cool to have both those bands on here. Actually, every band on this Mayhem is just like the last one. They're all good. So I mean, you know, not there's no picking and choosing. You're just here to see a full day of metal, and it's you know comparatively they're but they were both awesome. So I can't put one above the other. And how does Rockstar Mayhem compare to Warped Tour? <laughs> if at all. Uh, it, well, Warp's fun because the shows are the shows are kick ass. You know, I love playing to the fans on Warp. It's just it's a lot more people, and you know, fighting for showers and food every day is definitely a little difficult. But uh, you know, it's it's run by the same guy, so I mean, uh, I feel like Warp Tour is just six weeks of Warp Tour is a little harder than six weeks of Mayhem. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And is there a band that you watch every day regardless? And if so, also, who's your favorite band to watch? I, for some reason, I, I well, honestly, I usually always end up checking out Slayer and Slipknot set every day. They, you know, Slayer is just cl timeless classics, and and then, uh, you know, Slipknot, they just have an amazing set. It never gets boring. And then, and, you know, there's other classics on the on this tour, too, you know, with Anthrax. I mean, they're, they've been around for forever, so it's just, I've caught them a few times. I haven't got to catch them as much, but... I definitely catch Slayer and Slipknot almost every night, and you know Motorhead. I always tend, tend to be like doing dinner and getting showers and stuff when Motorhead plays. But uh, I've caught them once, and you know Motorhead's just badass. You can't say they're not. So it's really it's a good time too. But White Chapel formed in 2006. Um, what made you choose to have three guitarists to start off with? I think at the beginning, three guitarists just wanted the job, and it's how it started out. You know. I th even back then, you know, we were a lot younger, and uh, you know, to us, the Casey Strain started off with three guitar players originally, and uh, we just, you know, we just did it, and you know, it developed into something where I think it gives us a lot more diversity when it comes to writing the albums, and especially live. You know, it's a thicker sound, and it just looks better too, as far as just more people. You know, just more commanding. You know, I think it works out. So. All right, and your self-titled album has been out for about a month now. How's the reaction from your fans? Uh, so far, it's it's been it's been really really good or you know really kind of iffy because uh, we've had a lot of people say I never liked White Chapel before until now and when they hear the new album. But then you have the diehard fans that are all about the first album that just want a bunch of breakdowns and they just and I don't want to alienate any fans. There's still White Chapel on this album. It's just uh, you know they they don't like it as much. I, I, I mean I don't, I don't know what to tell them besides the fact that we're just trying to think outside the box more. We're not trying to give in to like you know making it softer or more listenable we're just going a direction that you know it just steps outside the box of quote unquote deathcore so you know we just want to we you know we don't want to be a band that fizzles out we want some longevity we want to be around for a while and we want to keep growing as a band musically and you know as far as our shows go and everything so uh the reaction's been more good than bad obviously it's just like i said that really old diehard fans for the old stuff you know they they don't like it as much but then you have guys that have been with us from the very beginning and loved every album just because it's grown and it's different so you know it's it's hit or miss it's always going to be hit or miss with no, any band no matter what so and how many of those new songs are you planning on playing for this tour uh we on this tour so far we're playing three songs from the new album uh section eight is one of them and that's that's honestly that was on the ep but we redid it for the album and then uh, we're playing uh i dementia and possibilities of an impossible existence so that's the last half of our set and the new album seems a little more complete. Um, they flow together well, and it seems a little more mellow. Um, what's your take on the overall sound of the album? Uh, I think this time around we concentrated more on uh, just writing songs instead of, you know, we all have these huge libraries of old riffs, and we don't, you know, instead of just cramming in a bunch of riffs into a song trying to make it work, we just really concentrated on making a song flow and making it have more feeling behind it than just than just trying to complete a song. And then. You know, we all had collectively more say so in everything, and we all made sure to just sit down with every bit of it, and just everybody gave their opinions about stuff. So, that's that's just, you know, that's 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 how the difference this time around went anyway. Um, Phil sings a lot more on this album, which I really like. Are you guys planning to keep up with this? Uh, as far as he, he doesn't really sing so much as just Singing. talk. You know, I think it's more just kind of talking. But uh, 
No, I don't know. We're never going to be a band that sings, honestly. We just can't do it. It's just not, it's not Whitechapel. You know, it, you can, you know, there's only so many ways you can go about doing that. And it, if it's done the wrong way, it, you're shooting yourself in the foot. So, I mean, I don't think we'll ever do that. The only thing I could ever see that working or any way seeing that working is it's like, you know, we had guest spot from a guy from Catatonia or, or something like, uh, you know the guy from Darkest Hour, John Henry. Like he, he has that really cool singy, screamy, you know, something like that. But it's still not even really singing, you know. So I mean, I don't, I don't think we'll ever do that. Oh, your favorite song off the oh, new album? The album uh, I definitely dig that one a lot too. But uh, uh, I like uh, culturist, cu culturalist a lot because uh, it's just, it's just an angry, pissed off song. So I mean, that and it's just, it's a bouncy. And then it, honestly. It's kind of hard to pick favorites off the album. I'm proud of all of them. So, I mean, I, I think uh, some of them probably like a little more than others, but, you know, I'm not going to I'm not gonna pick and choose. It's hard to on this album, which is a good thing. So, And you guys this time went with a very simplistic album cover. Um, I really dig it, but who came up with the idea? I think uh, guitar player Ben kind of came up. He threw the idea out there, and it was a really cool idea because, you know, the, the cover has... Uh, you know, it's it's our it's our state flag from Tennessee. It's a Tennessee flag, and like it shows for us, it's like a lot of we're really prideful about where we come from. So it's really cool to have that on the cover, and you know, we were all about it because we're all from Tennessee. And uh, you know, I think with the cover idea, that was you know when Ben th thought of it, it was just like yeah, let's that's we'll back that. You know, it's a really cool idea. It doesn't give much away as far as what the album's going to be about. So you know, that was the idea behind it. It's just not giving much away. So. And you were announced as direct support for Hatebreed later on this year. Just amazing lineup all around. Um, are you excited for the tour? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've all listened to Hate to Hatebreed as you know when we were younger, and uh, they're a heavy ass band. So we've never got the chance to tour with them, honestly. So this will be a good chance to just actually try it out and see what happens. I'm sure it'll be. It's, I mean, it's a heavy ass tour, so we'll see what happens. So no, I'm, I'm stoked about that tour. And on that note, um, who would be your favorite band to tour with? <laughs> band or band or bands. Either one. Or, uh, I always have like a, a dream lineup tour if it could ever happen and it would be like, let's see here, probably it'd be Iron Maiden, uh, the original lineup of Pantera, the original lineup of Sepultura, and at the gates, Meshuggah and Us. That would be the just most dominating tour of ever. That really so. would. <laughs> and the question of the day for you, um, what's your whole take on the Randy Blythe ordeal? That's a good uh, sense of territory here, but uh, no, no, no. I understand everything about it as far as it's it's a. Can I cut? Can I cuss on this? It's a fucking shitty scenario for Randy, and I really hate it. On the other hand, that's.